Hey, this is George with the New Hunters Guide, the YouTube channel and podcast helping new hunters get started and helping active hunters learn new things. Today, I wanna help decode the marketing hype of waterfowl ammunition. Whether you're new to the sport or just new to thinking about your ammunition, there is so much out there. I think it's one of the most daunting tasks for any new waterfowl hunter. I mean, you've got heavy steel, heavy metal, heavy 12, heavy hammer, heavy bismuth, Kent bismuth, wicked blend, Black Cloud, Black Cloud TSS, Fast Steel, S3 Steel, Dry Lock Super Steel, Hypersonic Steel, Nitro Steel, Tungsten Matrix, Tungsten Super Shot, and that is just a, a few of what's out there. There are so many different kinds of ammunition and different factors and variables that go into it. Uh, th there's no way I could cover it all in one video, guys. Not even gonna try, but just gonna help give you a framework and outline that you can use to help evaluate the different ammunitions that are out there in order to make good choices for your own waterfowl hunting. Now, I'm gonna cover the three biggest variables, in my opinion, of what goes into waterfowl ammo and the hype surrounding it in order to help you guys make informed decisions. Now, make sure you hold on to the end because the last point here is a game changer. It completely changed my paradigm for waterfowl hunting and ammunition. Now, people sometimes ask, well, George, what is your authority to be able to speak on this subject? Well, guys, I am just an average waterfowl hunter who also happens to have a PhD and an insatiable thirst for research and doing my own experiments when the data is not up to my expectations. I also work in the marketing industry and I have a very low threshold for hype. So things like this are of very high interest for me and I want to find the best information for myself and then also pass that on to you guys. So let's get right into it. Number one, there are three categories for waterfowl hunting shot. Three categories. You have single metal shot, you have blended metal shot, and you have mixed metal shot. Now, single metal shot is just what it sounds like. There's one kind of metal. You have steel shot, you have bismuth shot, you have tungsten shot, and every now and then you run into something crazy. But those are the three main ones. They're simple, straightforward, honest. You know exactly what's in them. You know what you're shooting. Now, when they changed from lead and about 30 years ago, steel was the number one replacement because it was the easiest to manufacture and the cheapest. It was also the worst performing. Early steel was absolutely absolutely terrible. And in my opinion, steel shot falls into two categories. Number one, you have bad steel shot. Number two, you have better steel shot. There, there is no good steel shot because steel shot will never perform as well as lead ballistically and it just never measures up to replace what it was intended to replace. Bad steel shot is the cheap stuff. The only reason you'd buy it is because it's super cheap. Better steel shot has been improved with technology over time and it is better, but I still wouldn't call it good. Then you have bismuth shot. Bismuth is denser than steel. It carries more ballistic energy, especially the further you go, and it enables you to pattern a little better to the steel in some applications. Tungsten shot is better than everything. Better than steel, better than bismuth, better than lead. It is the single best material to make shotgun shot out of because it's the densest, it carries the most energy, and you can have smaller pellets that still have more energy. The downside is that tungsten is ridiculously expensive. More on that in a moment. Beyond that, you have mixed metal shot and you have blended metal shot. Now, mixed metal is when you have two different metals, their shots are mixed in the same shell. So you have a percentage of steel BBs and then you've got a percentage of bismuth or tungsten or both pellets in the same shell. Now, I find this uh, particular category to be problematic. In fact, for new hunters, I would just scratch the entire category of mixed shot from consideration. Okay, let the flames come, but let me tell you why. Number one, you often get ridiculously low percentages of whatever other shot you're using. I've seen ones that are 85% steel and 15% bismuth. And same thing with tungsten. I've seen some that were maybe 70-30. Uh, Every now and then you find one that's like 60-40, but the majority of them, you're paying too much money for the metals that you're getting in that shot. So I'm not a big fan of the mixed shot, but there's other reasons. Number one, 
You have stratification. You fire that shot and then you've got steel BBs here and you've got the bismuth here and you've got the tungsten here and they're traveling at different speeds. So they all hit the target at different times, which isn't that bad except you've got different patterns for all two or three different kinds of pellets that are in that load. So your steel's gonna pattern a certain way, your bismuth is gonna pattern a certain way, and then your tungsten is gonna pattern a certain way. And you can't control for those. In fact, usually you won't even know which is patterning how, because all you see is the final of all of them having hit the target at the same time. You only got one choke and one barrel, so you're not able to control for two or three different patterns in the single shell. But I think the cost factor is the number one one reason why I'm not a fan of that one. Next you have blended metal shot. Now blended metal is where every single pellet is multiple types of material. So you might have a pellet that's both steel and tungsten. You might have a pellet that's both steel and something else that's tungsten and something else. You've got a multiple materials creating an alloy or a blend in the same pellet. Now, for the most part, I don't like this category either, but there is some good stuff in the blended category. However, it's really shady in the marketing, guys. I cannot tell you all the stuff that I have seen surrounding blended stuff. Uh, some t there's two big questions though. Two big questions that you need to look at if you're thinking about blended ammunition. Number one, what is in the shell? What is the blend? What are the percentages? Is it 60% tungsten and 40% steel, which gives you a little bit of a cost savings? Or is it uh, a lot of them today are maybe 50% tungsten and 50% they don't tell you what it is? They give you no information at all. Or you've got maybe 60% tungsten and you've got 40% plastic. And I'm not joking, plastic. They actually grind up the tungsten into a powder and then they mix in polymers, which is code for plastic. And you end up with little pellets that are part metal and part plastic. Now that sounds terrible, but actually it can work well if it's done right. But you need to think about what are the pellets made of and how much of each material is in the pellet. A lot of times they don't tell you and that's what I don't like because you're paying for a higher level stuff than what you're usually getting most of the time. The second question that you need to ask is what is the density of the final pellets? Often they don't tell you. They just say, well, it's denser than steel or it's denser than something. Maybe they'll tell you it's denser than lead, but I want to know what the actual density is. I know lead is an 11 density. I know that tungsten that's pure is 18. I know that steel is 7.8 or so, but what is the density of this shot? All right, that's what you need to know. If they don't tell you the density, don't buy it. If they don't tell you what the blend is, what the different metals that are in it, be suspicious. Oftentimes you'll, you, you just, you, you they just hope, you just whatever. It says it's bone crushing and it'll drop things out of the air and knock them dead in the sky at 40 yards and blah, blah, blah. What is in the shells? What are they made of? What's the actual density? If it's better than lead, how much better? What is the number? Give me a number and tell me the materials that are in it. Another issue is how uniform is the blend of your blended metal shot? Now, if they just mix some metals together and hammer some stuff together and you end up with like marbled pellets, well, those aren't gonna fly right. They're gonna wobble, they're gonna fly lopsided, you're gonna have patterns that disperse all over the place. It's gonna be a disaster. So you wanna make sure that whatever company you're buying from is reputable. Now's a great time though to thank the sponsor of this video. Oh, that sponsors me. I'm the one that did this video. Nobody's paying me to say any of this. This is all based on what I've done in my research, my ballistics gel testing, my pattern testing, and everything else that I've put together. But you guys can help me by hitting the thumbs up button. Hit that like button, helps this video reach more people. I would really appreciate it. That's basically all I get out of doing this. There's no money in it. It's just trying to get this out to more people. All right, the second big variable that goes into shot is the plating. Is the shot plated? Years ago, they would do copper plated lead. Now they're doing zinc plated steel, nickel plated steel. They've got copper plated bismuth. 
Um, what is the plating and what does the plating mean? Does plating matter? Well, the answer, the short answer is yes. Plating matters, plating makes a difference. It doesn't always make a huge difference, but it does matter. Plating does one main thing, which does three smaller things. It improves the lubricity of the shot. Look it up, it's a real word, lubricity. That is the coefficient of friction. So when you have higher level of lubricity, what that's gonna mean is that shot is gonna fly through the air with less friction. So your non-plated shot is gonna lose velocity a little bit faster as it flies through the air. But also, higher lubricity means it is gonna penetrate deeper in the tissue of the ducks or of the geese. So you will have a little bit better penetration because of the plating, just because it will slide through the ducks a little bit better. Now you combine that additional velocity at maybe 30 or 40 yards with the slightly better sliding through the tissue of the target and you get a little bit better terminal performance. How much better terminal performance? Well, in my ballistics gel testing, uh, non-plated ammo compared with plated ammo has been about 5 to 10 percent difference in penetration at 40 yards. 5 to 10 percent. Is that worth what you pay extra for the plating? Eh, some would say yes, some would say no, but plating does one other thing that I think is even bigger than that. It gives you increased lubricity inside of the barrel and most importantly while going through the choke. So what happens is, you know, your shell goes through the choke, it hits, goes through the barrel, hits the choke, the choke compresses it, all right? If regular shot, it compresses it, and then once it leaves, it expands some. What happens with the steel, with the plated material, is instead of just crunching together and then expanding, which is what steel tends to do, because steel is pretty much terrible, plated steel or plated anything will compress, but the pellets will slide along each other and they will elongate instead of just crunching and then expanding. So they will elongate and they'll go through the choke smoother and you will have less spreading when it comes out of the barrel. What that means is better pattern density. The, the shot stays together better while leaving the barrel. Now I have seen as much as 50% better shot with plated versus non-plated. Now that is the extreme example. It's usually not that big of a difference. It all depends on the particular shell. Some depends on the shot cup, the wad. It depends on your barrel, depends on your choke. It may be a five or 10% increase, but I've seen as much as 50% in unplated steel versus plated steel from one brand to another. So it can be a significant improvement and pattern density is the number one thing that's dropping ducks. All right, it's not ballistic energy, it's pattern density. One pellet traveling really fast is not usually enough to take down a duck. You need lots of pellets. So you're able to improve your pattern density with steel if it's plated. Same thing goes with bismuth. The third point, and this is the big one, guys, this is the revelation, is velocity. Okay, velocity is the speed that the shells are leaving the barrel. A lot of brands are boasting high velocity, super velocity, even hyper velocity of maximum speed leaving the barrel. And for years, this has been a war with different ammo manufacturers in terms of whose waterfowl ammo is better, who has the higher velocity, and that's the number one thing. People compare high velocity with all kinds of things. And guys, what I have learned recently, and I did an entire video about this, I'll link to it below, is that velocity is basically a vanity metric. When it comes to steel shot, velocity matters so little. In fact, 30 years ago, before we had steel, velocity wasn't even printed on much of your waterfowl lead ammo that you could buy because it didn't matter, nobody cared, it wasn't a big deal, higher velocity didn't really help a whole lot. But when it came to the steel revolution, people trying to say my steel's better than their steel, they just kept upping the velocity. And what you ended up with was loads that had so much velocity that that they, they appeared to be superior to other, other steel loads and even other materials, but guys, it's a farce. Check out this chart, okay? 
On this chart, I took hypervelocity steel, the fastest hand load I could find data for. You can't even buy loads this fast from any, am am any ammo manufacturer I'm aware of. 1,750 feet per second on steel. And then I took a bismuth velocity of 1,350 feet per second. And you look at this chart, okay, the steel starts at 1750. Once you get to 10 yards, 10, you've lost 550 feet per second of that velocity. And as you go further, once you reach 35 yards, the velocity between steel and bismuth are the same. And then after 35 yards, bismuth gets even faster than steel, even though the steel started ridiculously faster. Now guys, this is because one steel has much lower density than anything else out there. It also has to deal with, you've got that, the wad and the shot cup are all leaving the barrel. All that is slowing down really fast. That pulls back some of the speed just in the first couple feet. But the velocity loss on steel is ridiculous, okay? It loses speed so fast that even at the fastest velocity you can load it to and still safely, I'm not even going to say it's safe, it might be safe to shoot out your barrel, it still loses speed so fast that it becomes a non-factor. But the bigger issue, check out this chart, is the energy. Now this is the ballistics energy per pellet of that same steel number four shot that was going at 1,750 feet per second versus the bismuth number four at 1,350 feet per second. Yeah, at the muzzle, because the steel has so much more speed, it also has more energy. But once you get to 15 yards, people, the bismuth already has more energy than the steel. It was traveling at 1750, but at 15 yards, the bismuth is still hitting harder than the steel. And look at the chart. The further you go, the bigger the gap. Once you get to 40 yards, the difference is significant. And you're paying that extra money. You're putting all this hype into the marketing and blah, blah, blah. And guys, the steel is not much better with the extra velocity. It's a little better. Compared to other materials, velocity is a vanity metric. It does not and cannot and will not ever make steel comparable to a denser material like bismuth. What you need to determine is what is best for you and your budget, your hunting style, and your objectives. So guys, remember, pick your material, consider your plating, look at the velocity, velocity and pick the right combination for your budget and your hunting style. I know I poo-pooed on steel a little bit here, but the truth is that steel is uh, very inexpensive and budget friendly. Quality steel loads will do a great job at short to medium ranges. It's when you try to punch out a little further that the limitations of steel become very apparent, both in terms of poor patterns and just irrecoverable loss of ballistic energy beyond 30 yards. So guys, I hope this is helpful for you. I really appreciate you guys for watching. Till next time, God bless you and go get them in the woods.